Welcome, Mag. Holding big tech accountable, Google cutting off ad revenue to right-leaning website Zero Hedge and also threatening the same for the Federalist. The company says the sites failed to meet Google's standards on offensive content. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley introducing legislation, meanwhile, that would remove immunity from big tech holding companies like Google, accountable for censoring different political viewpoints. We have heard from the De Department of Justice as well. Joining me right now is Texas Senator, Senate Foreign Relations and Senate Judiciary Committee member Ted Cruz. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being with me. Good morning, Marie. Always good to be with you. Your reaction to what has taken place at Google, and let me just point out that last week there were reports that Google had eliminated the image of Churchill, Winston yep. Churchill. And then after there was a big, you know, hype about it, why would you eliminate Churchill's image? They said, oh, it was a mistake. Now you've got this pushback on the Federalist and Zero Hedge basically uh, threatening to rip off their, their advertising revenue, Senator. No, that's exactly right. And, and it's worth noting the power that Google has amassed. It, it's unlike anything we've ever seen in, in history. There's never been a company that controls more information and, and critically more access to information. Over 90% of the searches done are done through Google. And their control of search, their control of ad revenue, has the ability to control what the American people hear, learn, understand. And in this instance, they really abuse that power. They went after the Federalist, which is a conservative media organization, and, and they threatened to demonetize them, to cut off all ad revenue. And, and, and in the Internet world, that, that can be the difference between life or death. Now, the Federalist wasn't at, was, at first wasn't even sure what the basis was. They were eventually told that Google had some problems with some, some of the comments on their website. Not what they'd written, the articles, the journalism they'd put up, but instead individual users had, had written some comments that were offensive. Uh, I sent a letter this week to the CEO of Google pointing out that this was blatant censorship and listing about a dozen left-wing sites, all of which have comments. Now, I don't know what the comments were that, that Google deemed offensive, but I guarantee you those left-wing sites have all sorts of profane and racist and objectionable comments that people have put there. Google is not imposing the standards on them. And most critically, Maria, Google's not imposing the standards on itself. Google owns YouTube, the massive video platform. And if you take just a minute and look at the YouTube comments, you see all the time offensive, racist, profane comments. And, and, and so one of the questions, I, I demanded production of a number of documents, a number of internal uh, materials from Google as to why they were abusing their monopoly position. Google is a monopoly and why they were abusing their monopoly position to try to harm a competitor of theirs and impose standards on the Federalist that they weren't imposing on their very own company, YouTube. Well, we also see that on Twitter. Uh, we yeah. also see that uh, social media in general, these companies have become bigger and more powerful than anybody expected. You would like to see some co competition in this industry, but how do you stoke competition? I mean, you know, Google has, what, 95% of the market in search, Senator? Yeah, yeah. Well, and they're getting more and more brazen. I mean, when you talk to them, uh, the, the, the limits of their hubris seem to know no bounds. And, and so I, some time ago, sat down with the CEO of, Yugle, uh, of, of YouTube, Yugel, um, who, uh, who described how they had demonetized Steven Crowder, who's a conservative comedian. Uh, and, and, and she explained to me very matter-of-factly that, that Crowder had not done anything to violate their rules. He was completely consistent with their rules. But essentially, some left-wing users complained. And they, so they decided simply to cut off his revenue. Now, and she, she, she basically said to me, but look, you should be happy because we haven't banned him. We haven't silenced him. We just won't, don't let him make any money. And, and, I, and I asked her, I said, who the hell are you to decide who gets to speak and who doesn't? And it's only the left that's asking for you to censor. I'm not here asking for you to censor Bernie Sanders or AOC or whatever other lefty socialist you may be talking about. I think the best answer for, for bad speech is more speech. But big tech has an arrogance that they believe their political views are the only ones that, that, that matter, and they're going to silence anyone who disagrees. And it's a very profitable approach. And with Google in particular, I think their conduct last week, you know, it's interesting. It really crossed a line 
because this conduct last week, I believe, clearly violates the antitrust laws. And the reason is they were using ad revenue. They were using money to go after a competitor of theirs with what is clearly a differential 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 on their own wholly owned YouTube. Monopolies can't do that. Monopolies get shut down, get broken down. They face treble damages when they try to do that. But, but Google has the arrogance of Silicon Valley that they believe the laws don't apply to them. I'm hopeful this administration is going to make very, very clear that's not the case. And, and this administration, the Justice Department, is recommending new legislation, holding Facebook, yeah. Google, Twitter liable for some online content. Uh, they could get sued. Don't forget, on Twitter, there's also shadow banning. You've got yep. many of your colleagues in the House right now suing Twitter, yeah. like Devin Nunes, for, for this very reason. Let me ask you this, because we're only a few months away from another presidential election, Senator. Are you worried about some of these social media companies, as you call it, arrogance, trying to cheat, trying to uh, suppress speech going into the uh, presidential yeah. election. Yeah, look, big tech is angry that Donald Trump got elected, and they're angry at themselves for letting him get elected. And I, and I believe big tech has mm. resolved they won't let it happen again. They're going to do everything they can to try to silence any speech uh, that they don't like. And, and, and they're brazen about it. They've discovered that they can do it without major consequences, at least to date. You know, I've chaired a whole series of hearings looking at big tech censorship. I think this is the single biggest threat to our democracy. In one of those hearings, we heard testimony from, from a, an academic named, named Dr. Robert Epstein, who, who's done the only empirical study of Google searches. He found in the last election, in 2016, that Google's manipulated, misleading searches shifted upwards of 2.6 million votes to Hillary Clinton. And the interesting thing about Dr. Epstein, he's not a Republican, he's not a conservative. He is a liberal Democrat who supported and voted for Hillary Clinton, and yet he testified before my committee that he was horrified to see big tech, a handful of Silicon Valley billionaires, exercising blatant censorship and deception to try to change the results of an election. He also testified in 2020, if they do it again and lean in hard, they could move upwards of 15 million votes. This is a profound threat, and it's why I've been meeting with the administration over and over and over again, the attorney general, the deputy attorney general, the president, the chief of staff, the White House counsel, the chairman of the Federal Trade Commission, all of them I've met with on this topic to say we need all of the resources of the administration focused on stopping this lawless conduct and protecting free speech in our elections, because if we don't, Silicon Valley billionaires yeah. control well, and decide our elections. Well, this, this new legislation coming out of the DOJ that, uh, that they're proposing is, is targeting Section 230, as you yep. know, a decades-old portion of the law that spares social media companies from being held liable. For, for their content, the posts, photos, videos uploaded to their sites. That's because there was a thinking that they were the platform. They yep. were the platform for lots of different ideas. But what we're seeing is they're more than just a platform. They're deciding what should be on that platform. And in many cases, it's liberal content versus conservative content. No, that, that, that's right. And, and I'll tell you, big tech made a change within the last few years. Um, in one of the hearings I chaired, we pulled up an internal Google uh, presentation. It was a PowerPoint, about 50 pages long. It was entitled The Good Censor. That's what they called it, The Good Censor. In it, it contrasted be be between what they called the old way of doing the Internet here in the United States, the laissez-faire free speech model, let people speak, have their rights. They contrasted that with the new, and this is what they called it, the European-style censorship model. And, and the companies that Google identified as engaged in the new European-style censorship model were Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And, and, and so this is not accidental. They've made a decision to change, and they've done it because they believe they have the power and no one will hold them to account. I think we've got a responsibility to hold them to account. All right, Senator, we'll be watching uh, the legislation coming out of, uh, of the Senate as well as your efforts. Uh, Senator, good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure.